What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about Scream 7 in this video here today. We'll be talking about The Nun 2. We'll be talking about Saw X and I might have some small tidbits of just clarity I want to share regarding Maxine. Now starting off with Scream 7. Christopher Landon we know is directing Scream 7. He signed on to direct the project prior to the SAG and WGA strikes that are still ongoing. He had some interesting comments from 2019 about the Scream property that I wanted to share to kind of reassure anyone who is concerned about Landon taking over that perhaps he is someone who should be a part of this IP. Perhaps he's someone who should have been a part of the IP many movies ago. Who knows? But we'll just have to wait and see how he delivers in scream 7 but when speaking to comic book in 2019 about taking on and doing screen prop a screen movie and just being involved in the franchise in general he said i love scream scream is an amazing franchise especially the first movie which blew my mind when i saw it back in the day and i think kevin williamson is so crazy talented and also a friend of mine i also just think that there are a lot of stories to tell and i think that when you step back into a franchise you better be doing it for the right reasons and it better be because you have a really good story to tell now I think that his comments ring true with what we have going on with Scream 5 and Scream 6. As much as, yes, you can argue that it's not the story you would prefer to see told, I like and I can appreciate that they are trying to do something that is woven into the fabric of what we already know while still pushing forward something that is very much so its own thing with Ghostface still in the mix and with our characters, of course, being being linked to what came in the past but not relying too much on the past to let these characters that we have now stand and exist on their own because like i've said on many other videos i do not want to see the legacy cast used as a crutch i do not want you to sell to me that the movies will be about a batch of new characters but then somehow it would appear that the batch of new characters are not getting their time to shine as opposed to the old cast and i can respect that they are not doing that with these current batch of screen movies and i expect screen 7 to continue that formula as much as many of you could also argue that they still need to find that balance between the old characters and they should bring them back over and over again um but paramount picks also left this interesting comment over on twitter after one of you placed selena gomez into one of the final shots from screen 5 Paramount type Ghostface is keeping an eye out for for Selena. Now this of course got re or reignited the thoughts of Selena being in a screen movie, which is always still possible. But I doubt they would be giving us casting hints while a strike is ongoing. If I'm just being quite honest, but I thought that was a nice a nice little comment from Paramount Picks, and obviously it reignited the talk about Selena being in the screen movie. It's almost as if they knew what they were doing, but again, I doubt they would be giving us any casting hints while strikes are ongoing. So, jumping into Saw X, or Saw, I should say. There is a rumor going around about Spiral 2 being possible if Saw X is a success. Now, this came from an account, Saw X Updates, I believe, over on Twitter that just appeared back in July of this same year, so the account is very fresh. They tweeted, I heard... I heard Saw X, or if Saw X has good fees, then we can get Spiral 2. Now, I'm sure you can understand that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I get what they mean. Saw Space Official, who is again, one of the most trusted insiders currently as it pertains to all things Saw, to my knowledge, chimed in on this over on Reddit, saying, I've not heard anything of the sort. This Twitter account is not an insider and are just trying to gain followers by posting scoops and has even reached out to me to try and get info. Now that Saw X Updates account actually tried to call out <laughs> Saw Space over on Twitter. Um, I know who I'm more inclined to believe, not the person who's trying to argue with Saw Space over on Twitter, but Vink360, who has also been reliable on the Saw subreddit, said this about the Spiral 2 rumor. They said, if Saw X makes twisted millions of dollars, they'll want to make more Saw. If it was up to Lionsgate, I think more long-term franchise management would happen. But as of recently, that's less of a factor for some business-related reasons. So the bar for Saw success is now twisted to set. For the most part, I personally think if Saw X does around $100 million at the box office, we're getting more Saw. If it somewhat significantly outpaces Jigsaw, I think they'll be really happy and would likely try to fast-track a sequel to Saw X if they can come up with an idea that they like. Unless Chris Rock signals interest, though, I would be really, really surprised if Spiral 2 is next. I certainly heard they do intend to try and make a Spiral sequel eventually, but I think they'll only get back to that 
well when either Tobin centric integrals stop working out for them or when if Chris Rock calls them up wanting to make one. Now all I can say is why on earth would they go back to spiral stories if the Tobin prequel stuff of course is working. It just doesn't make sense for anything within that rumor to be believable right now. Fi financially see here's why it doesn't make sense financially it doesn't make sense because you're going to pause what works to revive what didn't because what works made you see hope in what didn't instead of continuing to profit off of what worked <laughs> again i liked spiral but spiral 2 is likely years away maybe a decade at best and probably something you won't see for many years if saw x is a success so i don't think that rumor has any weight i don't even think it makes a lot of sense why would the success of saw x hold any weight on getting spiral 2 if anything the success of saw x should weigh in on the trajectory of these type of stories being told more bringing back tobin bell once again if they were lucky not anything to do with spiral that seems kind of counterproductive but diving into the nun 2 Michael Chaves recently sat down with SFX Magazine and shared these comments about Frenchie in The Nun 2. He said, I wouldn't want to give anything away, but this is continuing the timeline. Uh, anyone who saw the first Conjuring knows that Maurice, aka Frenchie, is possessed and then exercised by the Warrens, and we know that that happens in the late 60s in the Conjuring timeline. You can see that the effects of the last movie have made him ready to wind down his story or maybe find someone to share it with. So that's where we find him, and then we start to realize that all is not right. Uh, some, as we all know, something escaped in the first film. So the guy's possessed, sure, but he's also looking for love. And who can fault him for that? Well, I can't fault him for that, sure. But here, here's the thing. From what I know about Frenchie's handling in The Nun 2, I'll likely be faulting these writers for the nonsense that seems to be on our way. Because, yes, it's predictable that Valak will still be attached to Frenchie after this movie since he hasn't met the Warrens yet. But it doesn't have to be bizarrely written like the nun 2 seems to do chaves also had these comments teasing the future of the nun there's a line in the nun 2 demons are infinite i like the idea that she's always been here in different forms i think there's still more stories of valak the demon nun to be told now me personally i don't want to see more after what i'm hearing about the nun 2 i don't want to see more if anything i'm just hoping the nun 2 is somehow executed decently enough for me to find it passable at best but money talks of course Last thing I'll chime in here about is, or chime in here on, is Maxine. Now, for any of you who saw my Maxine video from a few weeks ago at this point, a couple weeks ago at this point, I shared some tidbits and nuggets of stuff that I knew while also recapping what we had already collectively known about the film itself. So, just to reiterate to you guys, from what I know and what I've gathered, it would appear, yes, that Maxine is a whodunit, as opposed to what we got in X and Pearl, which were these deep character studies well, Pearl more so than X. Deep character studies about people who had eventually snapped and just gone rabid. <laughs> you're not going to have something like... I'm not going to say you're not going to have a character study in Maxine. You very much so, of course, are still going to see a continuing character study, I would assume. Because I don't know everything about the project. But, obviously, from what I do know, and from this audition tape also confirming it, it would appear that you have a whodunit on your hands you don't know who the killer is right off the bat it's happening during the area of the night during the era of the night stalker so naturally people are going to think the killer is the night stalker but the killer in this film is not the night stalker it's someone else and again like i said in my other maxine video do not overlook those small details in the cast if you examine it close enough you will find out all you need to know about the killer but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.